today is all about ATAR and non-ATAR. What is the difference between those and what does that mean for you and your considered pathway, particularly beyond school? and ensuring that you tick the boxes that you need to whilst you are with us in year 11 and 12. Now remember, as I mentioned last week, every one of you are on a very different pathway depending on what you, where you are thinking you are going after school. Okay? That's why it's important you listen for you. It's also important to listen, even if you think, mm, no, ATAR, university is not for me, Things change, and so it's still important for you to listen to all of the information so that you make a really informed decision. So ATAR and non-ATAR. First thing is, ATAR is a rank that you get to enter university. So it is your Australian tertiary admission rank. So really, the only reason you need an ATAR is if you are looking at going to university. So you can see right from the beginning, it's very different from QCE. QCE and ATAR are very, very different. That's the first thing that you need to log away. Okay, so it is a rank that you get for entry into university. As you start doing more set planning information in your pastoral care lessons, some of your jobs will be to have a look at some of those university websites, some of those university courses, and be having a look at what sort of ATAR rank you need to get into those. Okay. So if that is you, really important that you understand this next little bit as well okay, for those tertiary ranks. So it is a standard measure that is given to every single student who is ATAR eligible in Queensland that year. It is transferable to other states as well, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. Okay. So ATAR eligibility. It is a ranking from 99.95, which is the top score that you can get, all the way down to 0 0.05. If you are 30 or lower though, they just give you 30. Okay, but it does actually rank all the way down. It is based on the subject results that you get in your mainly general subjects, across the unit three, four pair. So at the end of a unit three, four pair in your subjects, you will get a mark out of 100. That is what is used to calculate your ATAR rank. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. There is, however, subject scaling that comes into play in relation to that mark out of 100 and how that is factored into your ATAR score. Before we get into scaling, let's talk about ATAR. To be ATAR eligible, your five best general subjects across unit three and four, or your four general subjects and one applied, or a VET certificate three or above, can count in an ATAR. So your top five general, or four general and one applied and or a certificate above Cert 3, will count towards an ATAR score. So here's the first thing that you need to be considering. When you come to choose your subjects and you know you want an ATAR, then you are ensuring that you are choosing general subjects. It's recommended you do all general subjects, even though an applied or a certificate can count. The reason for that is subject scaling, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. So that's the first thing you need to be thinking about. To also remain to be ATAR eligible, you must receive a satisfactory which if you think back to QCE from last week, satisfactory is a C or above in your unit three full pair. So to remain ATAR eligible, you must receive a grade of C or above in an English subject, in an English subject. That can be English, essential English, literature, all of those are offered here at ASPLE. So you must get a satisfactory C or above. 
So in other words, if you do really well in five subjects and get a really good mark out of 100, but you don't pass English 3-4 pair, you will not get an ATAR, regardless of how well you did in your other five general subjects. Okay. File that away in your brain to consider when you're choosing your English subject and the recommended level of English you get from your teacher. Okay. Subject prerequisites for university and the ATAR score for those courses. So remember I said you're gonna be investigating universities and different types of courses and what the ATAR score is. The other thing that you also need to be looking at when you're working in your pastoral care lessons is if you are considering a course at university and it says it has a prerequisite of a science, then you need to make sure you are doing a science. If it says it is a prerequisite and you must be doing math methods and or specialist maths, then you need to make sure you are doing those. Here's the thing though. If you are doing core mathematics now and you are not demonstrating that you are working hard to get the best outcome and then you're not recommended for those level of maths, that can have implications for you and that foundation learning. So that's why it's important for you to start doing that research now. So when you're looking at universities, yes, you're considering the ATAR cutoff and any prerequisites. I would also say to you, you also need to look at their recommended learning. So even though you may not have to do math methods, if it says recommended learning and you're sitting in the first year of university and you don't have math methods behind you and they've recommended it, you might find that a struggle. So be informed about the courses and what you might need. Okay? And that's what they're talking there about that key foundation. That key foundation knowledge that is of benefit to you going in there. Okay? So even if you're looking at doing economics at university and the high level of statistics that you might have to do in that course, it could still be a benefit for you to do math methods. Okay, so just factor those into your thought processes as to what you want to do in year 11 and 12 and beyond. Okay. I've made a little note down the bottom of that slide too, that if you do not get an ATAR or you do not get the ATAR score that you need, it does not mean that you cannot go to university in the future. There are lots of different pathways to get you to university and to open up those doors for you. One of those key ways is by doing a diploma at TAFE, the year that you leave school, and that can then springboard you into university the year after, sometimes with some credit towards that university course and automatic entry. And we will talk about that more in your set planning if it comes up, but also as you move through year 11 and 12. And so that's important to consider as well. There are other ways and opportunities for you. Where do you find out more information about ATAR? QTAC is the department that actually looks after ATAR scores and university applications. So they are your first point of call with anything to do with ATAR. Obviously the university websites, which I've already talked about, for individual universities, individual courses, prerequisites, ATAR cutoffs, and then obviously, I can help you as always. I mentioned about ATAR um, score and your mark out of 100 and your subject scaling. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that, but I do wanna show you one other slide, just so you have a little bit better understanding of that. You may not be seeing it overly clearly, but this is available on the QTAC website. Here is what you also need to understand. When it comes to the subjects that you choose and the mark that you get out of 100 at the end of year 12, after you've sat on the assessment, that mark out of 100 raw score is sent away to QTAC, who look after ATAR scores and university admissions, and subject scaling takes place. 
What that means is the 75 out of 100 that you got in physics may not stay at 75 out of 100 and so forth for every subject. So what I've put up there, and this is probably one of the most common subject changes that I make and the most common discussion that I have with students in relation to subject scaling and what it means. On that slide up there, and I said, again, you can access this on QTAC, this is the subject scaling information from last year for all of the subjects. This slide has the subject scaling that includes general mathematics and mathematical methods. So just to show you the difference in scaling sometimes that can happen between subjects. So if you're looking at general mathematics, last year, if you received a 65 out of 100 in mathematics, general mathematics, it's scaled down to 61.07. So 65 was scaled down to 61.07. If you were in math methods and you received, a, I'm just looking at, a, seven, a 60, so if you're in math methods and you received 60 out of 100 last year, it scaled up to 78.45. So 65 in general, scaled down a little to about 61. A 60 in method, scaled up to a 78. The reason I tell you this, if you are looking at wanting to do medicine, or some of those, for example, physio, and get into a science to get into to medicine, it's important for you to have a really good understanding of ATAR implications and scaling for subjects. So not only what is the ATAR rank that I might need, what are the prerequisites and recommended learning, it's also understanding the implications of subject scaling. Because it can make a big difference. Okay, so sometimes if you're just managing to pass a subject in something like methods and specialist, that's okay because it could outscale a lot better result in another subject. I'll also refer you back to the information I said about four general and one applied can count in your ATAR score. Generally speaking, your applied subjects scale in about a 50-ish out of 100 mark for an A in an applied. Okay. So just remembering and banking that information as you're looking at your options and considerations for subject choices and the information that you're going to start reading in your pastoral care lessons. And remember my email address or down in the senior hub if you have any questions prior to set planning that you want to clear up.